One of the most common questions I get about DaVinci Resolve is about the audio meters in the Fairlight page. What do they all mean? What meters should I be paying attention to? Why are there so many? Let's talk about it. Okay, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight page and take a look at where you can find all of your audio meters. Now, I'll be using the default layout for Fairlight, so if your screen looks different than mine and you want to follow along, simply go to Workspace in the top menu and select Reset UI Layout. Now, there are three main places in the Fairlight page where you can find your audio meters. There are also some meters that you can add in the form of plugins. We'll get to those later. The first area where you can find audio meters is in the monitoring panel. This is where you'll find your track meters, your control room meter, and your loudness meters. The second place where you'll find your audio meters is in your mixer, which is located to the right of your timeline. The meters in the mixer are track meters and they'll always show you the same information as the track meters in your monitoring panel. Both the monitoring panel and the mixer can be turned on and off by clicking on mixer and meters in the top right of your screen. The third place where you can find audio meters is in your timeline on the left side of your tracks. These are also track meters and will show you the same information as the meters in the mixer and the track meters in the monitoring panel. And since DaVinci Resolve found it necessary to put them in not one, not two, but three different places, let's take a look at our track meters first. The track meter shows you the audio levels of each track in your mix in decibels. It's really that simple. The meters on the left represent the levels of each individual track, so dialogue, sound effects, music, stuff like that, and the meters labeled bus represent the levels of any submixes you might have as well as your final mix. In this particular example, bus 1 is my final mix and bus 2 is a submix of my dialogue tracks. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on submixes. They're actually pretty fun to play around with. Now, if you pay attention to your track meters, you'll notice that the meter is either green, yellow, or red depending on how loud that particular track is. In traditional media, you generally want to mix your audio so that your dialogue is somewhere between minus 10 and minus 15 dB, which is about where the track meters turn yellow. Bus meters turn yellow between minus 10 and minus 5 dB because it's looking for the overall mix instead of an individual track. So if you edit your dialogue so that the track meters stay primarily in the yellow, you can then go on to mix the other elements of your video accordingly and you'll have a nice solid mix. The only problem with the track meters is that you have to kind of eyeball it to see where your audio peaks. But what if you wanted a more solid number to work with? If you go into your effects library in the Fairlight page, you'll find a plugin named Meter. Simply drag that onto a clip, track, or bus, and when you play your video, you'll get a solid number for your audio levels. Now, this is mostly helpful when you're trying to adjust an individual clip instead of an entire track or entire mix, but it's still helpful. Okay, let's take a look at your control room meters, which honestly, unless you're doing super professional mixes, you probably won't be paying attention to all that much, but the title said every meter, so Let's look at every meter. The control room meter gives you the levels in decibels of whichever mix you're monitoring. For example, right now I'm currently monitoring my main bus, but if I just wanted to monitor my dialogue mix, I could come down to this drop down menu right here and select bus two. Now that control room meter is showing me the levels of only my dialogue mix. The control room meter also has a true peak meter, which can be really helpful when you're getting into compression and EQ. Next up, we have the loudness meters, which are a set of two graphical meters and a set of numerical readouts that all point to the integrated or perceived loudness of your video. These meters are super important because everywhere you might post a video has a standard for how loud your video should be. For example, YouTube wants your video to be no louder than minus 14 LUFs, which stands for loudness units full scale. Now, the loudness meters meter against your target loudness level, which you can set by going into your project settings and in the Fairlight tab, changing your target loudness level. Let's take a look at each of the loudness meters. Starting on the left, we have the momentary meter, which monitors the individual loudness of each channel of the mix that you're monitoring. To the right of that, 
we have the overall loudness of your entire mix. Then we have some numerical readouts. Short, which is how far away from your target loudness your current audio peak is. Short max, which is how far away from your target loudness your max audio peak is. Range, which is the difference between your lowest and highest levels of your audio. And integrated, which is the overall loudness of your video compared to your target loudness level. Okay, let's take a look at the meters that can be added as plugins. We've already looked at the meter plugin, but there are a couple of others that I wanna mention, even though as a YouTube creator, you likely won't be using them all that much. The first is the phase meter, which monitors the phasing of your audio. That's a whole, different video in and of itself. And the other is the surround analyzer, which gives you a visual representation of the direction of your audio. That one is actually pretty useful if you notice that your audio sounds a little out of balance. Now, there are a ton of different ways you can use these meters in your mix. They can help you decide how much compression needs to be added to a track or how far to move the faders in your mixer. And I'll be making videos on all that stuff. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those videos. Then check out this video right here for more Fairlight tools that you should be using. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.